Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. This is my son Ben and today we have a closer look to Laphroaig. We will take two videos, mm -hmm. one of the quarter cask and the second one of the triple wood. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the quarter cask video. Mm -hmm. What's the specialty of the quarter casks? Well, uh, you have this typical American Ex bourbon barrels, and they have a content of 200, 280 liter, uh, 208 liters, somewhere in between. And in former times, uh, when the whiskey was transported through the highlands on horseback or on, on mules, then those casks were too big. Mm. So they reduced the size of the casks, uh, took out half, half of the staves, and then got a a pipe-shaped cask, which was quite long, as long as the casks typically are, but the diameter was smaller. And with this long cask, you could put one cask on one side of the horse and the other on the other side of the horse. And this was quite balanced and they were able to transport that. But the whiskey matured faster in those casks because uh, the minimal surface for a given volume is a sphere. And the typical cask has the same height as diameter, so it's very close to approximately a sphere. And those uh, quarter casks are very long and pipe-shaped, so there's approximately 30% more inner surface on which the whiskey can mature and can extract uh, substances out of the wood. So the first maturation is in typical ex berm cask, as always at Laphroaig, where the uh, best-selling Laphroaig is the 10-year-old with 40% 40, 40 ABV and this is now a quarter cask finished whiskey so first in the typical ex bourbon cask and then a shorter period I think six months around that time maximum 12 and this is bottled at 48 mm -hmm. it's unchill filtered uh, so this is hefty stuff mm -hmm. definitely definitely <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. So I've been to the Lafroy Distillery in 2015. If you'd like to see the distillery visit, um, just go on our YouTube channel or on whiskey.com under the whiskey uh, database with the distilleries, and you will find the Lafroy Distillery. And uh, the Lafroy Distillery is really nice because it's just a a small uh, Scottish, yeah, local. Distillery. It's with just seven stills. With uh, seven stills. Yeah, it's, it's not that small. <laughs> it's just, it just feels like a, a, just like a regular company that is just run by Scottish people and how you would imagine Scottish people to run the company. It's just, it's just very hands-on, and you see a lot of uh, what do you call these tractors coming in, mm -hmm. taking out the. The rest from the distillery uh, distilling business and they put it on the fields or to their cows and and it's it's just very small and and really cool and they have really cool uh shop and there's another thing within the shop within the shop you can become a friends of uh Lefroy. Mm -hmm. you became a friends of Lefroy very very In early 94 i think yeah i think you you <coughs> got a new number now because they changed the system yeah. or something like that yeah <coughs> um, but there's also a cool video where you can see how the Friends of Lafroig work. You get a little square foot of land, uh, 290 square centimeters, just just enough to stand on. And and then they lend you, uh, I think, raincoats, rain boots, and a GPS coordinate machine where you can <laughs> find your, your square foot of land and then you can plant a little flag in it and you you can show <laughs> that you have been on your land <laughs> and drink a glass of whiskey there. I've then done this during <coughs> the rain, so it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. So Lefroy is very famous to be, what's written on here, the most richly flavored of all Scotch whiskies, and that means it's the most stinking whiskey because it's all about peat, mm -hmm. peat smoke. Oh yeah, and uh, they have. They say they have a peat level of around forty to forty-five ppm in the uh, in the barley before processing, and uh, well, uh, it is. It still carries the sentence on the label, so nobody 
had complained about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the thing is with uh, the PPM of whiskeys, you only know how much PPM of the ingredients go into the whiskey. Mm -hmm. Usually when, when you have a whiskey and they say so much PPM, the whiskey doesn't have these PPMs. The malt that went into the distilling for this whiskey had this number of PPMs. But the number of phenols that remain within the bottle really much depend on the the type of distillation and all the other the complete process the yeah. complete process maturation has uh, you can mm -hmm. evaporate the matter of the phenols so uh, what's left inside the bottle really depends on how you treat the the whiskey during your production process and for some reason Lafroic really doesn't get out any phenols <laughs> it's really 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 smoky <coughs> Yeah, and this one is, as I said, it's 48 ABV and mm -hmm. unchill That's filtered, awesome. so this is even more. And, uh, as you said, maturation uh, oxidizes the phenols to more complex compounds. So the younger whiskey is, the more intense the peat will be. And this one carries no age statement. So it might be a little younger as well. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> That's quite some smoky whiskey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's quite some so, smoky whiskey. So I like uh, smoky whiskey, but not too hefty. And Lafroig is just the limit I like. Just yeah, the limit. for me, it's um, <clears throat> the, the combination of, uh, what do you call it? The combination of young, smoky and very marine flavors it's just it's tough so the first is smoke and the second is smoke and the third is smoke mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's incredible how this smoke well is lies above every other smell so that in the beginning you just have only the smell there's no no alcohol no fruitiness no nothing and you uh, need quite a time to adapt your your uh, receptors to this phenol, and it's a, a hospital phenolic nose. It's not a bonfire, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, coal fire smoke. No, it's it's hospital. It's really phenolic. And this smoke comes into the whiskey by burning peat or not with high flame very low flame and then this heavy smoke uh, goes through the barley and uh, the Froik is one of the very very few distilleries still producing a little bit of their own barley I think a fourth mm. or a third uh, on their own malting floors mm. so and behind that also oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and behind that I find a very little, yeah, coconut and banana. It takes quite a while to smell in that. Yeah, with the Lafroig, it's um, usually you talk about the different flavors you find in the whiskey. I think here with the Lafroig, you talk about the different kind of smoke you find <laughs> in this whiskey. So it's a, it's a very fresh smoke. It's not one of the damp smoke. It's more of a fresh smoke that you would that you would smell when you when you actually have the fire, and it's smoking, plus a bit of an ash ash flavor in there, and but still everything is a bit, as you said, phenolic, definitely phenolic. Yeah. Hospital, yeah, hospital phenolic, and the the banana is very faint. Is very mm. faint. So. Definitely, the smoke is the thing in this whiskey. Yeah, and there's a little more and more is coming up, and if you get used to the smoke, yes. then you you find more of the banana. Yeah, and I already have very little vanilla as well. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. It's quite smooth in my mouth, a little oily, but as soon as you swallow, the full impact is there and oakiness, really, really strong oakiness. 
going just just to licorice this intense uh, taste of licorice and uh, yeah the oakiness is is strong and you will never find that oakiness in the normal Lafroig 10 years mm. because it's from the quarter cask in which the finishing process took place mm. Mm. when you have it in your mouth it's really smooth a bit of oiliness but when you swallow it there's a lot of smoke going on and as within the smell it's fresh smoke a bit of bonfire smoke and a lot of ash with the phenolic undertone in there um, for the rest of the flavors there's a lot of oak mm. definitely a lot of oak mm. so the quarter cask is really coming through a mm. bit of a slight marine flavor I used to remember more of the the seaweed and all that kind of stuff but don't have it in that one yet. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's typical for the 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll mm -hmm. confuse it with the 10 years. And this one is dominated by the quarter cask afterwards. And this Definitely. was the intention of the distillery. So the quarter cask is really a, <coughs> a rough and tough whiskey uh, that is really strong. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember it stronger. <laughs> I remember, definitely remember it stronger. Um, so it's a bit more pleasant now. So if you really want to have someone not enter the world of whiskey and they are a beginner, then just serve them a quarter cask first. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's just for if never never serve this to a beginner just in the end when you say, hey, this is one of the roughest whiskeys that is out there on the market. And after the second sip, the oakiness is even stronger on my tongue. It's prickling the front and uh, there's no bitterness. There is this oakiness, mm -hmm. strong oakiness, and no bitterness because it's only a finishing period, not too long in the cast. There was no time to extract the tannins uh, from the oak. Yeah, so this is wonderful, a really, a really a good one, uh, <laughs> if you adapt to the smoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the beginning, if you, ooh, wow. if you like smoke, uh, then it's definitely the right whiskey for you. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. <clears throat> Yeah, so yeah, there's the triple wood coming up so soon. Yeah, so, soon, in yeah. two days or something like that. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please give us a thumbs up and see you next time.